Let's do a simple object tracking inside Blender to turn this into this. We will start with a new video editing template. In the sequencer, hit Shift A, select the movie clip and add our footage. Delete the bottom layer. Then trim the clip to select the part of the video you want to track. You can use K key to split the clip on the header. Adjust the render resolution and frame rate to match your footage. And make sure you have color management set to standard and look to none. Since I started with a video editing template, those changes are there by default. Now render your footage as an image sequence. This way we can make our tracking frame rate independent. Create a new project with a VFX template. I open up the image sequence we just rendered. Hit set scene frames and prefetch to load the clip for faster playback. Check this normalize box and change the match type to previous frame. This will usually give good results when tracking. Since we are doing an object track, go to the track panel and add a new object track. Then control click to add markers to your scene. Then I track the scene. Delete any tracking markers that don't have a decent track but we need at least 8 markers to solve the track. I believe this clip was shot in 26mm focal length, so I said that from here. Every footage we shot on a camera has what we call a lens distortion. For a proper track, usually you want to eliminate that distortion. Blender have a method to adjust that distortion. But it is something that you have to eyeball. So for that, go to Clip Display and enable Render Undistorted. And change this K1 value to adjust the distortion. This is definitely not the best way to do this, but I just wanted you guys to know that this feature exists. Now hit Soul Object Motion we get soul error of 0.52 which is pretty good but when doing object tracking I found this error value is not the best at representing the quality of the track. Sometimes higher error like 1 will give slightly better result compared to 0.8 pixel error. So when you doing object tracking try to keep the error at least around 1. For a camera track, try to make that error as low as possible, definitely below 1. I add a new layout workspace and position the camera like this. Try to place it in the same way you had when you recorded the footage. It is not necessary but definitely will help you to quickly plan out the scene. Come back to tracking workspace and hit set as background. This will add our clip to the camera as an overlay. Select two trackers. The distance between these two was about 5 cm. I put it here and hit set scale. Select our camera and in the constraints tab Add a camera solver constraint. Now select all of our tracking markers and click this 3D markers to mesh. This will create a mesh with a bunch of verses aligned to our markers. But it is not reacting when we change the frame. In order to make that work, we need to add the object solve we just did to this mesh. For that, select that mesh and add an object solver constraint. 
select the tracking object, select the camera and click set inverse. You can see it's working. Now it is all about making the stuff you want to track to this phone. We can use this mesh as a guide when making the scene. When you add new objects, you can either parent them to the track mesh or add the object solver constraint like before to make them move accordingly. In order to make only the interior of the box visible, first you need to know your box normals. For that, you can enable face orientation from overlays. You need to make sure the inside faces are shaded blue. If not, then go to edit mode and hit shift N to recalculate normals. Now in the shader editor, for the box material, I add a hold out shader and mix it with the principal shader. Use the back faces socket in the geometry node as the factor of the mix shader. This will make all the back faces of the box and everything behind it transparent. Enable the transparent box in the render setting to see it clearly. You can see it here with the Susan. I use the Spider-Man model from our advanced suit up effect tutorial. And also I quickly created these simple UI elements using geometry nodes. After that, I did some shading and completed the animation. Make sure to enable depth of field. You might have to increase the f-stop to a higher value to match the recorded footage. Enable the bloom pass and hit render. Oh, make sure to hide any unnecessary mesh from rendering. Now, it is time to put together our render and the recorded footage. For this compositing stage, I much rather prefer using something like After Effects because we can add stuff like grain much more easily. But to complete the tutorial, let's do compositing inside blender first let's add the movie clip use a scale node to fit it to the render size now put our render on top of it using alpha over node cg renders are always sharp so add a blur node and blur it just a bit use rgb curves node to do some color matching and grading. Using the blue pass, we can add more glow to the scene. I also did some curve adjustment to the footage as well. Then do some overall adjustments. Almost forgot. A little while ago, we adjust the distortion. So we need to take that into account as well. So add an undistortion node at the very start of the node setup. Then you can add some lens distortion to the whole clip later in the node setup. And that's how we made this scene. So 
So I hope you learned something cool, something new. I mean, that's what we like to do. We not only create stuff, we let you create with us. Hit that like button, comment your thoughts below, and don't forget to subscribe to LFX Learn so you won't miss out when the next video drops. Until next time, see you later.